Madam President, in addition to my displeasure with the Federal Reserve Board, let me indicate to my colleagues that I have just introduced a piece of legislation. I would ask unanimous consent that it appear in this discussion. I've uh, sent the legislation to the desk earlier that would prohibit banks in this country from trading in derivatives and proprietary accounts. Now, that all sounds like uh, foreign language. I understand it. But go back to junk bonds in the 1980s and SNLs. You've got that in spades in derivatives with banks in this country today. Some banks whose deposits are insured by the federal government are proprietary trading and derivatives. They just as well set up a roulette table in the lobby, laying off the risk for what is pure gambling on the American taxpayer. I say no bank whose deposits are insured by the federal government ought to be engaged in proprietary trading of derivatives. And that's the legislation I've introduced today, and I hope my colleagues who care about this issue will join me as co-sponsors on that legislation. I offered the legislation that is now law that said to the SNLs, you can no longer buy any additional junk bonds and you have to sell all the junk bonds you have. And I pulled the center pole out from the tent of this junk bond speculation, this orgy that went on in the 1980s that cost the American people so much and lost revenue. I intend to do exactly the same thing on derivatives. Banks ought not to be involved in proprietary trading on derivatives. That's gambling with taxpayers' money, and we ought to take action to stop it. And that's the purpose of introducing the bill today. Madam President, uh, I yield the floor. School teachers, school districts, cities, uh, elderly people who had saved for their retirement all have discovered in recent years the risk and potential danger of derivative trading when they don't know what they're doing. There are worldwide some 30 to 35 trillion dollars in derivatives contracts. Derivatives in another w manner and by another name can be simple hedging. And hedging is a very customary thing to have happen. Banks hedge, farmers hedge. Hedging is a very customary transaction. And I have no trouble with that. But derivatives have become an international financial game. And in fact, some countries call it wagering or betting. In this country, we have some very large banks that have begun trading in derivatives on their own account. They are involved in proprietary trading and derivatives for their own account, not for customers. The difficulty I have with that is when a financial institution whose deposits are insured by the American taxpayer with federal deposit insurance starts putting up a keno pit in their lobby and gambling effectively on derivatives, believing that if they lose their shirt, the American taxpayer will pay, that's wrong. I don't believe financial institutions whose deposits are insured by the federal government should be involved in any case or under any conditions in trading for their own proprietary accounts in derivatives. It is far too risky and far too fraught with potential failure. And in this case, the failure will be underwritten by the American taxpayer. We've seen a chapter of this in the past. It was called junk bonds and savings and loans. Let's not see that repeat itself in this country with banks and derivatives. Now, most American banks aren't involved in derivative trading. 99% of them are not. But we have several very large banks in the country, some of the largest, that are involved in derivatives with risks up to 500% of their entire capital structure. I'm introducing legislation that I had introduced in the previous Congress, and it's very simple. It does not prohibit traditional hedging by financial institutions for the purposes of hedging risk. It does prevent and prohibit institutions whose deposits are insured by the federal government from trading on a proprietary basis in derivatives. That makes no sense, and we ought to stop it. The fact is we've got federal regulators involved in looking over the shoulders on derivatives trading. But it's like having traffic cops involved in looking at computer crime. It simply doesn't work. We've got a 30 to $35 trillion worldwide derivative business, and we see what can happen. You see what happens when a 28-year-old working for a British bank living in Singapore bets on Japanese stocks and loses $1 billion and everyone stands around scratching their heads looking surprised. We saw people stand around scratching their heads looking surprised at the fact that Orange County went bankrupt. And we've seen it time and time again in the last year or two.
And it's time for us to stand up and decide that it ought to be to say to all financial institutions in this country, if you have federal deposit insurance, you have no business trading in derivatives. The American taxpayer doesn't deserve to be stuck with your losses if you want to gamble with their money. I would hope that some of my colleagues would see merit in this legislation and help me pass it. I recall the, the legislation that I offered that finally passed the Congress prohibiting savings and loans from buying junk bonds. It was a struggle to get that passed, but I finally did. And the reason I got it passed was, uh, unfortunately, we had already lost a bundle by having SNLs buy junk bonds. They were up to their neck in debt with junk bonds and uh, should never have happened. I thought, the, I mean, the ultimate absurdity was the U.S. Fed, the federal government ended up owning junk bonds in the Taj Mahal Casino because an SNL that went bankrupt owned Taj Mahal Casino junk bonds that themselves were non-performing, and so the federal government ended up owning bad junk bonds in a casino. And that's the absurdity of where we got with junk bonds. And we're going to head the same way with derivatives, mark my words, unless we decide that institutions whose deposits are insured ought not bet on derivatives. And that's the purpose of my legislation. My hope is that several colleagues will see fit to help me pass this legislation in the near future. Mr. President, uh, with that, I want to thank my colleague from Ohio for uh, indulging me with this statement, and uh, I would yield the floor.